We're celebrating the Olympic season here at Make Music by having a friendly competition. We're going to have uh, Peter, CJ, and Doug engrave some challenges, and uh, we'll see who comes out on top. Well, in front of you, you have a system of Chopin, and this is your first challenge. We're going to start with uh, just an open copy of Finale version 25 and then we're gonna see how fast you guys can engrave it so on your marks get set go so after about three minutes you can see CJ is in the lead with his note entry and has started working on expressions and smart shapes and Peter's working on the right hand I think getting some of that uh, cross beam stuff in the first measure CJ's remembering to save often. Save, remember to save often. <laughs> I haven't even named it yet. I should do that. And Doug is also working on note it. entry. Uh, so CJ, you happen. said the, the second group of grace notes. Sure, so there's grace right. notes before a note, which are easy to input, but then there's grace notes at the end of a measure, which you have to go as far as I do it. I put them in uh, one by one by clicking them in, because you, you, if you have the duration filled in the measure, you can't go past that. So putting those grace notes in, you have to do uh, one by one versus during the normal workflow. So Peter, you're adjusting those same grace notes that CJ had trouble with. Yeah. You looked like you were handling it a little differently. Can you so, tell us about that? Yeah, so I was changing the beat chart to... Uh, what the beat chart is, is it shows each individual beat in the uh, notation file. And then uh, what I did was, normally it's set, you know, like way over here. And so I just moved it to be all the way at the very front of the measure. You'll notice the bottom eighth notes are wrong, so I'll have to fix that. But uh, to me, it's a little bit easier than trying to do crazy stuff in this measure to make these grace notes appear in the right spot. And it's going to play back the correct way. Alternate approaches. I'm still experimenting. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm entering them normally first. Doug is also working on these same grace notes. So Peter, you, you're using the default articulations for these uh, piano fingering markings. Yeah. And then positioning them manually so that they match some of the odd positions that are on uh, the original document. Yeah, if this were consistently measured, uh, I can go in and actually change uh, the default positioning. I can choose where I want it to appear uh, and how I want it to look within this articulation designer. But in this case, since they're all over the place, it, it isn't worth my time. Okay. And CJ, you built your own expressions sure, uh, for these um, fingering markings. Yeah, if you look at the original, it's not just Times New Roman, it's closer to our Maestro font. And so instead of uh, using the default articulation ones, which are in Times New Roman, I made my own expressions. Uh, I have one size of them here, then I have a bigger size of them. So that way, uh, when it's on normal sized note heads versus the 75% grace notes, uh, you can get the right size. Okay, after about 20 minutes of total work, CJ has said he is finished, so we'll let, uh, take a closer look here. Here's CJ's finale file, and here's the original. Uh, one thing I notice is in the third and fourth bar in the left hand, your beams aren't as slanted Correct. as the original. If I wanted, if you wanted to, mm. to adjust that, how would you, how would you do that? Uh, a couple of ways. I mean, you could do it manually. My first suggestion would be uh, note beam resting. Do the Patterson plugin, Patterson beams. Um, Ta da! Now they look a lot better. Going to make it look more like the original. To fit it all on one line, it's just too big. So I'm using the resize page. I set it to 80 and suddenly you get the spacing and everything looking a lot more like the original. Oh, you used resize page? I did a system reduction. Either way. Like both day, yeah. Yeah, I had to do that in order to make it look more like the original. Okay, Peter's all finished up. One of the things that makes this one tricky is that Chopin doesn't include threes above his groups of triplets. So Peter, how'd you get rid of those? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, what I chose to do was I opened the document options and then there's a tuplet uh, menu that has a lot of different options for how you want your tuplets to look, but all I did just in the interest of time was change both the number and the shape to nothing. Okay, we're going to have CJ and Peter play back their creations with uh, Steinway Model D that's in the newest version of Finale.
Okay, and Peter? Okay, for the second event, we've got a jazz lead sheet from a long time ago deep in my past that is in desperate need of some pretty serious formatting and uh, some, some notation help. As you can see, the, the measures aren't consistent among systems. Um, there's some collisions. Uh, chord symbols are done with the text tool. They're not even really chords. They're scales. Um, the whole thing needs some help. And so these guys are going to get 15 minutes to do as much with it as they can. Um, whether that's changing the chord symbol so that it uh, is more easily recognized by musicians, um, adjusting the layout, changing the font to give it a more handwritten appearance, uh, whatever they can accomplish in 15 minutes, um, they're going to do, and we're going we're gonna to see what it looks like. Okay, 15 minutes have elapsed. CJ has pulled up the original here on the right and the new version here on the left. What are some of the things that we're most in need of fixing? Uh, phrasing. Four bar phrases uh, are not apparent in this one. It's uh, default. There's no lock systems. It's just music. And so I uh, just did a quick select all, shift command M, change that to four, and then you have your music spacing. Uh, yeah, uh, I wanted this to have more of a handwritten look. Uh, so the first thing I did was I changed the font via the document uh, default oh. music font option to change all notation fonts from what was used before, which is Maestro, into Broadway Copyist, which to me looks a little bit more like it was written with a pen. Uh, and then the text fonts, you'll notice, are also a bit different. Um, this is what's called the Finale Copyist font, um, included with any copy of Finale, uh, that um, just kind of does a better job of emulating sort of the uh, some of the newer real books, like the Colorado Cookbook or the Real Book Volume 3. Uh, so I just wanted to go for that look. I agreed with your uh, four bar phrase stuff, um, but I took a completely different approach. I created a new document from scratch using <laughs> oh, Broadway copies, and I simply idea. copied and pasted every into it. And then doing that method, I didn't have to change any of the fonts except where I wanted different fonts. I had all the chord libraries I wanted at my fingertips, and I was just ready to go. Yeah, you nice. probably could finish this first. He did. <laughs> well, that, that's there you go. So yeah, I mean, I I tend better. to use that when I get stuff like this. I create, I go to the, create a new document, copy whatever I want in there, and then I can write in what I want to change. You know, you can always use copy and filter, so I don't bring any over chords or any text or anything. And then you just got something clean to work off of. Yeah. And for me, I think that's a much more efficient workflow. Yeah. So these guys have just taken a look at the third challenge, uh, which is. <laughs> um, a piece of f music that is in the finale uh, repertoire folder that comes uh, comes included with finale uh, that's had some <laughs> modifications to its music spacing and page layout. It absolutely does not look like this by um, default. <laughs> it is it is I think oh, what you could man. call a hot mess. And so we're gonna give these guys twenty minutes to oh. make it look as good as possible. And after twenty minutes, they are going to print. They're going to print their result, and we're going to show it to our uh, our product manager, Mark Adler, who's going to who's going to grade it. So what I did is I uh, went to document page format score, uh, which is kind of a global setting for your page margins, your spacing uh, as it relates to the width of each system, uh, and and page spacing. And so um, I just changed those to kind of a more friendly setting than what they were at before and uh, it actually got me pretty close but now I'm just getting these um, these first systems that have an extra amount of space I'm just trying to change those now. Doug where did you start with this beast? Page layout, redefine pages, all pages. Got me all my margins and everything already set up automatically. Okay Peter is our early leader on this one and he's gotten everything to look much better on the page Music spacing, system spacing, margins, all that stuff. Systems are relocked. And then show us what you were doing to, to tweak the ties. Oh, sure. Uh, well, the ties, earlier they weren't really matching uh, the slurs as well as I wanted them to. I happen to know that our judge cares a lot about that. So I decided to uh, look at the tie. I went into document options, then the ties submenu. I clicked on this button here for tie contour. 
and I can see the thickness on both the left and right sides of the tie as well as the tip that it tapers off to. Uh, and now these are all values in EVPUs. Um, so I remembered those numbers and I went into the Smart Shape tool, then Smart Shape, uh, Smart Slur options, and I can input those same values. There's a couple more settings that you get uh, with thickness and slurs, um, just to kind of vary them up a little bit more, but I just use the exact same values uh, on the slurs as I did for the ties. We're here for the judging of the final event so that all of you at home can get a better view of just how ugly the modifications were. This is what these guys had started with. Pretty much an engraving disaster. And now, Mr. Mark Adler is going to take a look at what these guys have created. So Mark, what's the first thing you look for when you're kind of inspecting or grading engraving? Well, for this one, it's going to be, you know, it needs to be set up with like this, uh, more of a score. Um, so that was in a kind of ding this one a little bit because it's, you know, all at 100%. So this one's all at 100%, big. Big staves. Okay. Big systems. These two were set up more like you would expect a, a score to be set up. This person did a nice job getting, you know, everything to fit, in, uh, or a lot more to fit into four pages. So we have, um, you know, four, four systems per page, except for the first page. Everything is balanced nicely. This one is kind of, we have a lot of white space at the bottom. Kind of went with three, three, and you know, throughout. So if you're publishing, you know, your your publisher is going to be happier with this because it's going to take up less less uh, printing costs. Do we have a final verdict? Yeah, I'm, I'm going with this one. Okay, the winner, gentlemen. Ooh, I mean, yay! <laughs> Very good. Congratulations, CJ. Winner of this event. This is the dedication we we put into our engraving. The competition's been over for several minutes and Mark has the red pen out. CJ, our champion, winner of two out of three events. Our runner-up, Peter, winner of event two.